So now we come to the part that we're all looking forward to, poetry reading by uh, Tina McCarthy. Um, so um, how many poems would you like to read to us? Um, I have a series Oh, I have a series of three poems that were published last year in a poetry journal called Cordite, which is an international and national uh, poetry journal of the highest order. I was very lucky that they liked my work and published three of my poems. And they're about Nana. Nana worked as a domestic servant. I personally would call her a domestic slave. Uh, being the Aboriginal woman out the back in the shed that looked after the colonizer, his children, cooked, cleaned, serviced, did whatever needed to be done. Um, and often a child would come out of that situation. So my father was um, an illegitimate only son uh, from a situation of Nana being on a station. I was told by an Aboriginal woman once that these women were called Bush Marys in New South Wales. The men used to apparently say, when are the Bush Marys coming? And it was the saying that they used to say, the colonizers. Um, when I heard that, I just thought, Bush Marys? Like, when are they coming? Like, what a bizarre thing for people to be saying. And why, you know? So I did a whole series on the Bush Marys, and I wrote these three poems, and uh, they all got accepted. I thought one of them might, but they accepted the three of them. So I'll just read you those first. non-virgin used by the carnal. She is her body, she is her blood, she has no voice. She comes out of the bush, she comes out of the dark. She comes out of the light, she returns to the dark. She is the mother of the bush, she is the Holy Ghost. When are the bush is coming? Mary scrubs and cleans till her hands crack and bleed. Mary wants for nothing, just perhaps a good feed. Mary hears the sound of the white man's whistle. Mary scrubs and cleans, or trying not to bristle. Mary has been called to stop work, to clock off. Mary scrubs and cleans till the shine's so bright. Oh no, is that the sun setting? Mary prays to Mother Mary, please just get me through another night. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, and the final uh, third poem is the ghost of the Bush Marys. The ghost of the Bush Marys, like playing cards, these Bush Marys gave birth to honouring the divine, O oh Mother Earth. The woman, the women told the men, we gathered, we. Young Mary first told Magdalene, Mary said, he is risen. Three Aboriginal women came along, they took nothing. They strung coolamans, they left, bearing gifts. Women carrying children, honouring the divine fertility spirit. She is into earth and marking older plains. Oh, okay. Okay, yep, yep. Um, this one is my, what I call my sorry poem. Um, It's 
titled Who's Sorry Now? A sorry memento or a sorry lamento? The night bird sings its morning song. The day beckons like a light through the shadows. It feels hollow and it sinks me. A kind of weight follows, darkness pervades. It sinks into every crevice. Don't cry, baby, please don't cry. You are nothing but a promise. Return to silence, the quiet and calm of the night tide, hitting the shore like a slap that's been worn before. Fantastic, Tina. So you might open the um, discussion to the floor if anyone wants to ask a question. and teach them how to do the job. Um, 
these people are meant to leave the job and give the job to Aboriginal people, but they often don't. And they stay in the job and make a fortune. Um, and I consider, and people, Aboriginal people, consider a white person saying, well, maybe or not you can have money this week, we're going to give you this much as a gatekeeper. So there's another way of looking at it. So there's, do, there's different ways of looking at what a gatekeeper is, but essentially they're carers of the country, so they protect that place. So sometimes when you talk about your work, you know, they are sort of artists, trade secrets, isn't it? Which we don't want to disclose too much. <laughs> or is it trade secret in this case? Any other questions? I yes. Have, um, an interesting question to ask you about your Italian heritage because I too have memories of my family um, passion rates. Um, how is that? experience to you? What do you remember about that, that cultural experience? Oh, just that I was too young to appreciate it, you know? I do have very strong memories, and I was telling Janice as she was painting me uh, yesterday, day before, uh, that my first painting at Kofa was actually the bath and the Italian tiles and the grapes and my feet, and then I literally painted all that and then I jumped on the painting and started stomping on all my feet. <laughs> so it became a performance. Um, as with a lot of my work, I'm the central subject and I'm, I perform. I perform the work. Um, and then it continues on and grows from there. But um, I just remember having great memories of running through the veggie garden and pulling carrot out and eating it and all. And, you know, um, going down to the cellar and looking at salamis. And, because they were literally first immigrants that came out and lived off the land in modern day Australia, but set it up like, as you know, like old Italy. So they had, they fully lived off the land in a, in a modern environment where they had a veggie garden and a cellar and a cow. And, they made milk butter cheese from the cow, then ate the cow, and you know, <laughs> the veggie garden, and you know, they just ate and did everything from the land. And you know, that is a really beautiful culture, and it's one I feel a bit ripped off by, because as a child I wasn't really allowed to be Italian either. I had to be an Australian. So even my name, Tina Maria, which is actually my name, uh, was Australianised to be Tina with a double E. So Tina, Tina. <laughs> 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 <laughs>